All right, I guess we'll get started. Um, so uh, Keith Dumoulin, um, I've been coming to walk for a couple of years. Uh, I guess this is my fifth World of Commodore, and uh, this year I'll be showing the Amiga 1, uh, A122, or 1222, sorry. Um, and we'll go through some of the system features of this and, and when it's expected out, and then I'll show you some keyboards that we've been working on, some mechanical keyboards for the classic systems that we'll have for replacement. Um, I'd like to start off this though um, by remembering uh, a friend of ours, uh, Sid Bolton, um, passed away a few years ago, or last year I believe. This is the sun of space. Sorry, I never got to meet Sid. I read a lot of his stuff, heard a lot about him. Um, nothing was said uh, earlier yesterday about that, so I just wanted to say something about that and maybe give a round of applause for his, his um, contribution to the community. Thank you. Um, so we're going to start. The Amiga 1, uh, A1222. Uh, I believe it's the third year it's been out. It um, went through various revisions and delays, and right now we're in another bit of a delay where the board is being redone. Um, there's a few changes that need to be made. It is supposed to be out uh, mid-2019, so that's finally going to happen. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with the, the um, Amiga 1 series, uh, they're made by Aeon, distributed by Amiga Kit in the UK, and Amiga on the Lake in uh, the USA. Uh, the retail machine now is the Amiga 1 X5000. Those, some of you may have seen it here last year, I had it on display. And uh, this will be the more affordable, entry level uh, version of the machine. Um, I have it on display over here. It's a very small micro micro ITX board, um, so you'll be able to do some really creative case designs. Very small form factor with a uh, API Radeon uh, series graphics card, and you can go from the uh, X1300, the older ones, right up to the latest RX series and players drivers. Uh, they're all ready to go and working very well. Uh, recently. The Ethernet drivers were completed, so now we have eth onboard Ethernet with this device, and soon we'll have sound drivers. Uh, I believe once that's done, they'll start rolling up the ISO and it'll be getting ready for production and, uh, and release. Um, sorry, I hate to turn it back, but I just gotta, I'll get rid of this. Um, a lot of people ask about classic software. So, built into Amigo OS 4.1, uh, it's all PowerPC based, so they've made a run in UAE where you can double click on any ADF file or WHD load image and it will just run in a window or full screen, however you like, and they pretty much run flawlessly. I haven't really found um, any games that don't run. I haven't tested them all, but um, they're, they're really great. Really good backer compatibility. Most workbench apps will just run on uh, 4.1. Like for example, Dizzy Torrent by uh, David, he uh, has tested on 4.1 and his Dizzy Torrent client works great. <coughs> um, let's just say uh, browser functionality, there's a couple of browsers, they're not super great. I know there's two in development, um, so there will be new browsers coming to this, and once we have that, um, we can use it more as a daily machine. I use my X5000 daily, and the main limitation is the browser functionality. Um, a new browser will really make this a mainstream daily use machine. Other apps, uh, we have some nice new games. The Tower 57 was ported. We have a nice M player that does full screen video, 1080p, uh, no issues. Um, older browser, we have nice emulators uh, like uh, Neo Geo, uh, Atari. Uh, <coughs> all these emulators run really, really well on Windows 4.1. And yeah, that's about it. What's your starting price? Starting price, um, it's not official, but it's said to be around 550 US. So it'll be a, a lot more affordable entry point uh, to get back into the media with the current system. Uh, specs are dual core power PC. It's a uh, free scale, I'll show you, <laughs> uh, free scale 1020. And uh, at 1.2 gigahertz, uh, system supports 2 gigs to 8 gigs of RAM, and uh, I believe that the OS only supports 2 gigs at this point. But hopefully, that will get 
fix a new route date. Um, what else do I have here? There are FPGAs on board and GPIO pins. So um, part of the thing with the Amiga community has always been the ability to hack things and make your own ROMs and make your own boards and all these awesome um, add-ons over the years of ROM switchers and accelerator cards and neat things. So that's kind of being carried on with the, the 1222 where there's two rows of GPIO headers, much like a Raspberry Pi, and you have a lattice of PGA on board to start to design you know, a floppy emulator or uh, who knows. A lot of things that can be done. So one thing, like I said, I was being waiting for is these sound drivers, and then uh, hopefully that will wrap it up and we'll get something up. Anything anyone wants to see in particular? Any questions? Well, can you use the browser now? Or you said the browser? I don't have it online. Okay. Uh, internet access, but I can load the browser to show you. Um. And would there be support uh, for that later? Because you know how you got to keep upgrading your browser for websites that are on the internet. Yeah, I'm hoping the new browser will, will be supported. Yeah. So this is OWB. It's an older one. Um, I'll show load just the default page. It works great, the browser. It's just not very compatible with newer sites like Facebook. You have to use the mobile version. Or um, Google Docs works great. Sheets and, and Docs. Works with Google Drive works well. Um, there's also another browser called Odyssey. I think it's the same one as in Morphos. Um, it works really well. It's a little more advanced than OWB. Um, and I know it's, I think, going through a new update right now as well. So. There's a few few options for browsers out there. Yeah. Um, this runs on a uh, Freescale Power PC. Correct. Uh, does everything have to be recompiled for that, or does it have a sixty-eight thousand uh, emulator? I can't answer that okay. <laughs> entirely because I'm not sh totally sure. I know the Power PC architecture can execute some of the PPC code or some of the sixty-eight K code. Um, I don't know the, all the intricacies of that. I'm not a designer, so I believe you can, recom you can If it's a workbench app, you can recompile it to take advantage of the MUI and the, the newer graphical things. Um, but yeah, I, I can find out more for you if you want. I can update the, the page. Anyone want to see anything or anything? Neo Geo. Does it run Google? Sorry. Yeah. Does it run Doom? Yes, it runs Doom. It runs Doom very well. Can actually go full screen on that just to see. Can I? Yeah. yeah. So because it runs um, in UAE, it's kind of like emulation. Let's go. Four games and, and the WHD load and, and ADF files, yeah. Yeah. But workbench apps, most most of what I've tested will just run on workbench. Um, but the um, you can optimize them yeah. for Power PC. But you don't have to. I think it depends on what what CPU functions were were used. Okay. So if it was probably like a light wave or something, they're probably going to recompile. Um, I can't get this to go full screen. So, okay. <laughs> I can do it. So it, it, I'll just run through some of this. You see the system is quite fast. Um, Amigo S 4.1 for this is not finished. Um, this is all pre-release. Running off an SSD, serial ATA. Uh, let's see, Superfrog. So burn. I know Superfrog runs right through this. So I think I just restart it now. Let's go full speed.
Okay. I had it going, maybe it's a T. I had it going full screen out in the uh, board. Right. It can't. I guess you can also emulate scan lines on it. Yeah, you can emulate scan lines. You can do, uh, I know there's, there is a newer version of this um, that I didn't have time to update to. So most games just run. Uh, for joystick support, you can get those USB to uh, nine pin adapters. Monic Soft and a few other people are making them. They work great. You know, it's for. All right, I'll just let that go and I'll move on to the keyboards. Um, so last year at World of Commodore, we were talking about new hardware for the classic systems and how many. You know, accelerators and all kinds of things and boards are being redone by you know Chucky and all these people and the one thing we thought is there's keycaps coming for the existing keyboards but what about the broken keyboards so um, a lot of you are probably familiar with Kipper 2K is so I, I do a lot of development with him and we decided to make MX keyboards for the classic machines so what we've done is I don't know who's all familiar with the way the old keyboards work but they were a plastic membrane two plastic membranes inside and you type on them, they flex and, and make your keys work. They're old, brittle, you can get replacements, they're very expensive and very hard to get usually. Um, so what we've done is we made circuit board membranes, so to start with, so you can replace your membrane with a circuit board, screw it back together and you have a keyboard that will work properly and not uh, have to worry about those membranes breaking on you again. <coughs> Then we moved on to the MX keys. So everyone, is everyone familiar with MX keys? The little micro switches with the clicky keyboards. Um, so we decided to build a keyboard for those. So you can solder on your MX keys on them and uh, have a really nice, great feeling keyboard, very solid. And then we went through a couple design phases with 3D printers. We were building um, all these contraptions of you know, sectional 3D prints, because what we wanted to do is allow the home user to be able to print this all in sections, buy the keys off eBay, you know, order this board and assemble their own system, but 3D printers are not quite, to print this big is kind of expensive, and to make it in sections was not working. So what we did instead is we did a um, circuit board, you can snap your MX keys in here, it goes on about eight far apart, we solder it together, and this will fit inside your existing 500, 1200, and 600. And you'll have a new keyboard, very solid, very responsive. There is um, LED strips, so if you want to do backlighting, you want to go through the work to solder in your LEDs, it's a lot of work. Um, you can do that. And then you buy the clear switches, and the light will come up through your keys, and you'll have, have clear keycaps. Um, this will work in 500 and 1200, so you have the 1200 board with the little connector, and we've made a little circuit board to replace that the connector that everyone always has problems with. So now you have a circuit board you can plug in, no more problem with that. Uh, the retail models will have USB, so if you're taking an old or a new case from uh, the Kickstarter project, and you want to put a Raspberry Pi in there, a new keyboard, you'll have USB to plug in as well. Or if you want to use that in a case and look up your PC, lots, a lot of options. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing how people are going to use them. They will be available soon at Amiga on the Lake. They'll be the official distributor. Um, and pre-orders are open for those now. And I think, don't hold me to it, but I believe they'll ship probably sometime in February. Uh, same with the 600. Same idea. And a bonus with these is that you get a new LED board built in. So everyone that has a 600 that's fought with that little LED board and the wires always come off. We've fixed that as well, it's included with this. And the same with the, the uh, 500 board, you get the LED board, so you can solder on some new LEDs and have a replacement for that. And there's a 3D print file for a little block that lines up your LEDs, and you'll be able to uh, fix up your 500 and make it look great again. Uh, this is, I can pass these around if anyone wants to look at them, or you can check them on the table. Anyone wants to look at this stuff? Around. Uh, I want to play with this. It's a it's a prototype of the 600 version with eBay keys, and they're very solid and great feel. Uh, it's not perfect because these are just eBay keys, 
all the yeah, actually go there. Um, all the keys are being re redone right now. Uh, we sourced a place in China that is remolding them in the proper Amiga colors and black, and uh, we'll have sets for all the different versions of the keyboards. Test uh, the initial ones are going to be like color, color match, and black. However, if you did the LEDs, you could get those keys and then source transparent letters. You know, have a whole set, but maybe we can look into that. It's yeah. a, definitely a good idea. Um, yeah, so very solid, very nice. They all fit well and make your media go longer. I'm going to pass this around if anyone wants to check it out. That's really, that's all I have. Any questions? Anyone want to see anything on 4.1 or play with it? Go ahead. That's really all I have. Thank you.